for a spectacular tutorial. This is a promise made, promise kept. Um, many of you had asked me to show you how to make this really fun photo folio. So that's the plan. Today I am working with Masquerade from Authentic Paper. I'm part of their design team and I always look forward to their Halloween collections every year because they are amazing. And this one is really clever because it's a play on masks. Isn't that hilarious? And I wanted to show you the other images. So there's two sets of images in this collection. There's the mask images and then there's cute, like vintage, just cute Halloween. But the mask images were what I chose to work with for this project. And as you can see, they are gorgeous. The colors are rich. They have this wonderful sort of Victorian. Um, some of them have kind of almost a retro vintage feel. And this one I'm going to use to make a birthday card for my son. I'm so excited about that. But anyway, um, here's the project. This is a five and a quarter by seven and a quarter shaker folio. And I've got a uh, sequin stuck up there. But I made a shaker box with a resin frame and an image from the collection, filled it with buttons galore and more sequins, and I'll link to all these supplies. These are old Prima flowers, and I've left some of the glue webs on to make it creepy. Then I've added some Rene Bouquet's beautiful board chippies, the sentiment, the webs, the spiders, and then ribbon from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And I've also used a die from Amazing Paper Grace. This is the doily round to make my background here. So open this up and the inside on the top is a belted waterfall and this has a magnetic closure and there is room here for 10 photos and this measures five by five so you can get pretty good sized photos in here. And then at the back, I'm, you're gonna learn how to make these really fun little magnetic folios. So that's great. The tutorial will show you how to build the base, add all the elements. I don't spend a whole lot of time on decorating because otherwise it would get too long. But you'll have everything you need. The wonderful thing about this folio is I've made it up now in three different styles. So whatever paper you want to use, whatever theme you want to go with, it works. And it will hold a ton of photos. This is such an easy way to get pictures of your pets or your kids at Halloween. Um, you know, trick-or-treaters, if y'all are doing that this year, some neighborhoods are, some neighborhoods are not. Your Halloween parties, all of that. It fits neatly in here and it is so much fun. So if you're ready to get started with the tutorial, hang around, it's coming up next and we'll build this together. Let's get started making this fun little Halloween photo folio. And again, you can adapt this with any paper collection for any theme. It's just, today I'm just showing you the basics of building the base and adding the mechanisms. So to begin with, you need a 12 by 12 piece of black cardstock. And I've cut this to seven and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. Then you're gonna place it on your scoring tool. You're gonna score at five and a quarter and at six. And this is going to form our basic folio base. And you can see, I went ahead and added little strips of paper to the spine, and just so I didn't lose them, because I cut them, I didn't want to lose them. And we want to begin by preparing the inside of our folio. And the first thing we're going to do is add a pocket on the bottom. And for that, I have cut a seven and one eighth by five and one eighth panel of this um, skull and crossbones paper. And we're gonna glue this down on the bottom. So that there's just a little border all the way around. And again, be careful not to glue above your fold. 
and then the same size, seven and a quarter by five and a quarter, and I'm using the diagonal stripe on the top. Most of this will be covered up. Um, but before I do that, I got ahead of myself, which is easy to do. We need to put our belly band piece down. And this is a 12 inch piece of black cardstock. This was just left over as a scrap by two inches wide. And I've scored this every eighth of an inch between six and three quarters and seven and one eighth. So I just made four little eighth inch score lines. The reason for that is it's just going to help it to close. And this is gonna hold our waterfall feature in place. So we're just gonna glue this large piece down so that our first score line lines up with the edge of our card. Okay, so that looks good. And now we can glue this panel down and that hides that mechanism. So that's why we do it that way. So now we can put this panel down. Then for our waterfall mechanism, you're going to need another sheet of black card stock and you're going to cut five panels that are five and a half inches wide by five inches tall. You're going to score a half inch flap on each of these and this is going to be the little hinge that allows our waterfall mechanism to move. And we're going to line this up over here so we have an even border, top, bottom, and side. And we're just going to glue that down. And then bring in the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and just put them all in. And once that is done, you want to cut to cover these. You need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten panels of your patterned cardstock, and you can use whatever ones you like, but these are cut to four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And then you're just going to glue these over the top. But with the first one, this is what I want to show you. Before you glue this down, bring in your magnets. And these are basic gray small magnets. You can get these at Country Craft Creations. You can also often buy them online from Joanne or other online retail shops. So I'm going to put this down. I want to put this one down first because the position of that one is the most important. And then I like to secure this. This is a little trick I learned from Ginger Rop with a little bit of score tape. Then bring in your second magnet, and this is a negative because the one we put down was a positive. Peel off the backing so that the little adhesive piece under there shows. Then just fold this over, press it lightly lift it, and now this is going to close the way it should. Then set this in place with another little piece of score tape. That's just in case the adhesive on the magnet fails. It's kind of like a fail safe. And you will take that off like this to line your cover. And then what I did was I cut paper slightly smaller than this area here to line this, and this is gonna cover up. And then I just cut a little fishtail banner on the end. Just 
just like that. And you can see, this goes right over there. And then line the front. Then you can decorate this with a really cute um, punch out, or you can put an image over that, however you want to do it. But that's how you hold all those pieces in place. Now, if you want to add a flap, go ahead and cut out one of your three by four images. This one happens to be horizontal. And I just scored a half inch flap on the left hand side. And I'm going to wrap that behind my panel of designer paper, like this. Put adhesive on this area. And then this is going to glue down right here. And then on the back side of that, you have room to add journaling, a small photo. But it's just a fun way to dress these up. To make a quick pocket, take your Happy Halloween and we're just going to put a very thin bead of adhesive and glue it so that it's even top, bottom, and side. And then you can take another 3 by 4 and tuck it in there um, or a small wallet-sized photo, either way. But it just dresses this up. So those are some ideas. If you want to do a flap that flips down, score your half inch line on the bottom of your image. If you want to do a flap that lifts up, score it at the top. If you want a right hand flap, you're going to score the right hand side of your card. But that's basically how you do it. So now that we've got this all done, you can see we've got all these wonderful little flips and flaps. And here's a little tuck spot that I made with the border piece just by gluing the ends and putting just a tiny bit of adhesive. Then I took a couple of scraps to use as photo mounts and tucked those in there. This is a flip down. And that is one thing you want to check for. See how I got a little bit of glue on there? You need to check your flaps to make sure so that that doesn't happen. But anyway, that brings us to this last page. And I want to cover up this black border strip. And the best way I know to do that is with a pocket. So I cut a piece of paper that is six inches by two and a half. And then I scored flaps on the sides and along the bottom. This one I scored actually five eighths because I don't want this to poke up over the top. But the other one I did a half an inch. And we're just gonna glue this down. We don't wanna cover the fold. I want this centered top and bottom but this does a really nice job of covering up that flap and then bring in some of your cute mask icons from the um, punch out sheet and just glue these down on the pocket as a decorative element since our theme for this little album is masks Just like that. Then to go in the pocket, and let me move this out of the way so that we have room to work. We want to create this little folio, and this can be used um, for journaling, for mini folio photos. But this time, what I've done, let me take all these little pieces out that are pre cut. This is a 12 inch tall, and I just cut this from scraps that I had. I believe it is 12 by three and a quarter, but I'm just gonna double check myself. Yes, indeed. Yep, 12 by three and a quarter. So I scored this four and a quarter, eight and a half. And then this little piece left over is gonna be your top tab. So four and a quarter, eight and a half because your images are three and a quarter, or are three by four, so I just went a quarter inch larger than that. 
Now I'm going to bring in my crocodile tool and I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use the deco side, but whatever corner punch you have, the, this just makes it really cute. Um, and then on your short pieces that I cut here, and I think I'll tell you the measurements in a minute. So it goes on the cover, this goes on the inside. So the small pieces for this are cut three by three and a quarter for your tab pieces. And you wanna make sure whatever piece you go in here, you're gonna cut your tabs on the top. So choose something that's not directional or remember to, cause see if we put this in, like we could put that in and that would be okay. Does that make sense? So now we need to add our magnets here and we're gonna do this the same way we did The same process but the magnet is going to be placed here and you want to come down far enough that um, it's, it's not going to be difficult to cover if you go too close to the edge you're going to have a hard time gluing your paper down so I think I came down about an inch with that and then our score tape Peel off the backing, press it in place, lift, secure it with a little piece of score tape. And now you can cover this and you've got these really classy little magnetic um, folios, which are so fun. And then you're just gonna cover this with your liner paper. So for the large pieces are three by four, the small pieces are three by three and a quarter. And you just glue those down. You're gonna make two of these. So go ahead and do those and I'll go ahead and cover mine. So here we are all finished up. I just trimmed out this image from a three by four and then you can see these are all lined and it has that wonderful little click when it closes. This is going to fit right in this pocket. So this is a great place to tuck in a little gift card if you're giving this as a gift or write a little note or small, little small photos. So that basically finishes this up and then you can decorate the front however you want. And I made a second one that we're gonna put in the pocket that we're gonna make now, same thing. So down here for our pocket, you need an eight and a quarter by three inch piece of black card stock. Score your half inch lines, sides and bottom, cut up to that horizontal line and swing out. Flip it over, burnish along your scored lines kind of train that paper to fold. Just gonna put a dot of glue in the corners and I'm gonna put my adhesive along my hinges and line this up on the bottom of this paper, just like this. Oops. Then I cut a liner from the Argyle that is, I think I want an eighth of an inch smaller, so that's what I usually do is an eighth of an inch. So, yep, seven and an eighth, by two and three eighths. And you can ink the edges if you wish. This goes down right here. And 
then I have this quote by Oscar Wilde, a mask tells us more than a face. This is going to decorate our pocket. And then to go in this pocket, we're going to build another little photo wallet that's going to fit in there nice as you please. So this is, whoops, picked up some hitchhikers there. This is how you make this. So this is how we make this folio. I had scraps from my black paper and I had one that was 12 inches by four and then I had another little piece that was probably, I don't know, probably six and a half or something like that. Anyway, I, I took this four inch piece and I created a little, um, overlapped it so that this opens out to be a trifold. And now we have one, two, three, four, five panels for photos on the inside of this. And then you're just going to line it. This panel is cut slightly shorter than the six inch. That's so that it will fold nicely. And then you just decorate this up however you please. And this goes into this pocket, just like that. Very simple. And now see, this is what it looks like when it's closed. Everything fits neat and tidy and it will stand up for display, which is really cool. All right, so I've been working on the cover and I'll just go over with you very quickly how I put this together. This of course is the Nightfall collection and I just matted a four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths inch piece of this wonderful tartan on um, blackjack and orange blossom. And then I did messy stitching on my sewing machine to connect the layers together. This little bat pattern was the little leftover piece I had from cutting this and I just flipped it and also stitched that down. Then I took an amazing paper grace die. This is the doily round. This is the doily round. And I cut the background from orange blossom just using the frame. And then I came in with blackjack and cut out the doily and glued those together. And what I'm gonna do when I'm all done is come in and put rhinestones in there, but I wanted to kind of catch up on where I, wa where I was. Now this is a white resin um, frame from Melissa Francis. And the first thing I did was paint it with black chalk paint. And then when it was mostly dry, I came in and just very lightly wiped over it with a dry paper towel. Then I came back with this little birdie metallic wax and just using my finger rubbed it over that i used the gold and the silver and then these are renee bouquet's um, beautiful board spider webs and the little spiders are renee bouquet's too i've got a fourth one around here somewhere but he's hiding i can't find him um so i glued these on the flowers in the corners to make the shaker frame i just back it with my score tape three layers of foam tape, fill it with these buttons galore and more Halloween shakers, which are so fun. Do you see there's spiders and pumpkins and um, these are their little sprinklets with the little pumpkins and candy corn. And then the image of course is a three by four from the collection. Really reasonable ribbon. This is um, the yellow, orange, pink plaid, but it, to me it looks like candy corn and I love using it on Halloween projects. The only thing with this ribbon is that it's very, very silky, which makes it look wonderful, but I find I have to tie it um, with wire. I have to wrap the center with wire, otherwise it, the bow comes apart. And then I added this little um, micro black micro gingham, topped it with, these are old Prima, what was the very first autumn one they came out with? Anyway, that's what these are, those little flowers from Prima. And I've left some little glue webs on here because I kind of like how it makes it feel Halloween-y. And then this is the sentiment. This is from also Renee Bouquet's. And I left this, first I tapped it with Jet Black Archival Ink. And then I came in and just with my finger, very lightly wiped ivory um, chalk paint over that and kind of wiped it back to make it look worn. And now just to highlight it, I'll show you how to do this. I'm just coming in with this gold metallic and you see you just rub your finger into that. And I actually usually rub a little bit off when I want very light coverage like this. 
and then you just come in and rub over and it just does this wonderful sheen to our happy Halloween sentiment and now it really looks good I might add just a little bit more in here because that white chalk paint really holds um, the wax and that's all you have to do I mean it's done and then you just wipe your finger off and it cleans up really well so the last step for this I'm trying to think oh yeah then I took a little bit of metallic iridescent string and strung this little bat charm through the happy Halloween so I'm gonna adhere this to the cover of my folio and look I mean this was messy stitching guys it's really 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 messy um, but nobody sees that part I think I need to work on my bobbin on my sewing machine because it was behaving badly so I just went ahead and did messy stitching which works well for a Halloween project anyway so no big deal fold this down I'm just going to bring this in and line it up This is always the last step in a project for me, is adding the cover to the front because it stays nice if you do it this way. And it's a lot less bulky to work with too. It's really bulky to work with this when it's, um, you know, on top of the card. The other little thing I did, see how this looks like it's floating? This is kind of a cool trick. I'll show you this very quickly. I took my hot glue gun and where there were solid spaces, I just did little dots of glue like that and then I set them aside to dry and they dry hard and they're almost like a clear dimensional. Um, so it worked really well with that title and I will do that again. I hadn't done that before, but that is a trick you can bet I'm gonna pull out and use again because it worked really well. Um, because it doesn't show. But anyway, that is the project. I'm getting this all glued down here. It's hard because I've got so many little things to work around. But um, I love the way this turned out. This is such a clever collection for 2020 with all of the masks. And the only thing I'm gonna add is just some rhinestones in here on the spokes of this doily. Um, I thought it looked a lot like a spider web, so it was kind of fun to use with this but there we have it now you know how to make this really fun photo folio with the waterfall the belted waterfall and the little folio pocket on the inside and super fun Halloween um, creepy but cute and I didn't do anything here I want this for pictures so this is just this is how I decorated the belly band and this is how I decorated that the folio just by stringing the banners across. You have to keep everything in here kind of flat or you're gonna have problems closing it. You could always go an inch on this spine if you needed to, if you felt like you needed to make it thicker. But anyway, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design for Authentique Paper. Thanks for joining me. Happy Halloween. Bye.